Hello, brothers and sisters and YouTube family. Hope you guys are being blessed. This is something that has been on my heart, and I'm glad the Lord is addressing it and allowed me to experience it for myself first. I know many believers who are struggling with being attacked by the incubus and succubus demons. According to Webster's definition, incubus is an evil spirit that lies on a person in their sleep, especially one that has sexual intercourse with women while they're sleeping. Succubus is a demon assuming female form to have sexual intercourse with men in their sleep. They're demons of lust. In my five-year journey with the Lord, I can count on one hand how many times I've had dreams like this. Usually in my dreams, the enemy will tempt me, and the Holy Spirit will interfere to stop me from falling into temptation. However, this particular week, I was really getting hit with thoughts and images of lust. I kept casting them down and not indulging in the temptations. When the cleared access to do an opt to Father God, which is an eight-day prayer petition consecutively, for a particular prayer request. She wanted Father God to give us a spirit of prayer and supplication in the community. Anytime you do these types of prayers, you almost always have some type of suffering you're asking for. So it was in this week I was seeking Father God for that grace for us all when this attack happened. The day before the attack, I had temptations of lust come over me stronger than it had been, but I resisted. Then that evening, I found myself falling into temptation in a dream that was incestual and homosexual. I was awakened by Holy Spirit through a song he played over me called Angels of Breakthrough. This song means so much to me because he has used this particular song several times over me to break me free from any bondage that I'm in in a powerful way. So when that song played over me in the middle of the night, I nearly snapped out of the dream I realized I was in. I then realized what I was doing in the dream and how my body felt. I immediately began to rebuke and bind a spirit of incest, homosexuality, and lust as I was in tears wondering why the Lord would allow something like this. I cried feeling literally sick to my stomach as though I wanted to vomit. As I mentioned, I've had lustful dreams before but not this vivid and not this perverted. Usually I recognize it's enemy. I shake it off and don't allow him to ruin my day with condemnation and guilt. However, this time the guilt was overwhelming. The disgust and shame I felt was overwhelming. To make it worse, in the dream, I actually liked it. My stomach was in knots as I felt like I wanted to throw up as the enemy was flashing images over and over again of what had happened. I kept asking the Lord for his mercy. And if he could at least please take away the images from my mind. I didn't think I could live with these recurring images replaying of what happened. Then it hit me as I realized many of my brothers had dealt with this and really struggled with shame. I finally understood truly how they felt. I also began to have compassion for those who had been sexually abused, molested, and the enemy had tormented them with images of their past. I cried realizing now the shame they must have gone through when this happens. I never understood the shame in this way, but now I did, as I cried not only for myself, but the many others who had been oppressed with so much shame that it made them turn from Jesus. I don't think I truly understood those who felt so much shame that they could not run to God, where in my situation, I had Jesus right before me in the monstrance, but I couldn't turn to him. I was feeling emotions of resentment, confusion of what happened, why the Lord allowed it, and feelings of even liking it in the dream. Then after crying and praying a bit, I was attacked again with sleep paralysis. I knew this was warfare. I woke up the next morning determined that I had to run into his presence to find my peace and receive his mercy. So in worship, I was discouraged at first, but I began to praise my way through what had happened the night before. When I felt the Lord reminded me of my petition to God the Father, I had also asked him to give us all visions or dreams for a burden that was on his heart. Did he answer my prayer all right by giving me this burden for those in bondage to sexual immorality, sexual identity confusion, and those who have been abused sexually and attacked by these demons of lust because it's so common than we think. I began to cry and pray fervently for this generation and many who are battling with these attacks and binding the spirit of lust. Then Jesus had me confess my sins to Mother Claire about this and receive an absolution from her. Can I say, guys, I felt so much freedom and condemnation gone. Confession is so powerful. That's why Jesus asks us to confess our sins to one another that we may be healed in James. Demons of shame never want you to confess because they know the healing and freedom you will receive. 
For those who are Protestant, this is a powerful sacrament we have lost in the church. However, the Lord is bringing all that back to his body. And for those who are Catholics, going to confession every week is powerful for you as well. Since COVID, many churches are closed still. So for those who are feeling the weight of condemnation, guilt, shame, of any committed sin or temptation you're falling into, Heart Dwellers has online confession absolution you can receive from our bishop, Father Jim. He wanted me to extend that to you guys, that it is confidential, whatever you tell him, and you can reach out to him on Facebook. I'll have a link to his page. Just simply message him with your confession to receive an absolution. You may be thinking, what is an absolution? Remember, Jesus said to his apostles in John 20, 23, If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they're not forgiven. So that is an anointing and grace he has given priests when you go to confession. To be absolved of your sins is to set free, release, or discharge you from oblation, debts, or responsibility. It is really powerful as you recognize that it's Jesus through the guise of your confessor or priest forgiving your sins and setting you free from the burden of condemnation, shame, and guilt. You can feel something supernaturally happens when you do confession. So I encourage everyone to take advantage of this sacrament, especially as a Protestant. So I will have Father Jim's information in the description. So I came before the Lord after praying, saying, Good morning, my beloved Jesus. I feel you were giving me some thoughts concerning why you allowed the dream. Jesus responded, My beloved, how are you feeling? I said, I feel so much better, like a weight has been lifted off my shoulder and my heart. Thank you, Lord. Jesus said, Well, that is the power of confession and receiving absolution, my dear one. That is why it's so important to go to confession, that I may wash you clean of every extra man, heaviness the devil's put on you with shame and condemnation. I said, Lord, I was getting that you allowed all these terrible dreams just for me to pray, to really intercede because it truly gave me a burden for that. I forgot that's what I asked for. Jesus responded, Yes, many of my beloved ones are attacked in the same way. This incubus and succubus demons have been around since the time of Noah. And if the demons can get you to fall into temptations when you're alert, they will do it when your defenses are down. And I said, as you mentioned before, when we're tired, sick, or frustrated, Jesus chimed in, and asleep, my beloved one. You see, that is the time when I use many of you, when I can impart to you counsel and wisdom by my spirit to your spirit to do my will, where I get no resistance or contention but my spirit in you wants my will. Therefore, he plants seeds deep in your conscience that will influence many choices you make that following day. That is the time where I also do ministry with many of you, taking you to places, praying for people, and situations all over the world you know nothing about. However, that is also the time the demons are busy at work, and so are their servants by demonic powers. They too can leave their bodies and cause havoc in the spirit because so many people's defenses are down when asleep. I said, well, Lord, how can we protect ourselves? Jesus continued, well, that is the wrong thinking, beloved. You cannot protect yourself, but I can. And I do protect you and all my chosen ones at the time of darkness when they sleep. Psalm 91 is a powerful prayer to pray over yourselves and your families overnight, right before you sleep. But you must remember that I permit everything. So even when the attacks come after you have prayed, then stand in me, in my word, in my resolve not allowing these attacks and temptations to move you into discouragement, shame, depression, but to pray, interceding for others. Remember, I said, submit to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee, James 4, 7. When you submit to what I permit in your lives, even as you're asleep, you resist Satan, where he wants you to feel ashamed, disgusted, discouraged, which causes separation between me and you. How this works so well with those who are attacked in this way during their sleep. It's attacks against your faith, and my goodness, as a continue to spew lies that I'm not good if I allow this, that you're sick, perverted, and vile, and this is who you really are, something inside of you wants it. So they push you to act on these temptations and seeds they have planted in you after the attack. However, only if you would resist him, stand on my word. Many of these attacks are permitted through inherited curses and willful sin. If you know you're not walking in willful sin, the many times there may be a generational stronghold in your family line that needs to be broken, and I'm bringing it to your attention by permitting these attacks and dreams. Just as I have mentioned before, the demons love to use projections as well 
and they will project their desire for lust, condemnation they feel, and shame they are in bondage to because of what they've done, knowing that they will be separated from me for all eternity and thrown into the fiery lake of hell. You see, they can't stand to feel the despair alone, so they project that onto souls. As the saying goes, misery loves company. So the desire for you to accompany them in their misery. Don't allow it. Immediately reject the dreams, the attacks, and ask for my mercy. First, examine your heart if there was any open door in what you watched, listened to, read, conversations, and your thoughts, and repent. If after examining your conscience there was no act of willful sin, then begin to examine your family history and break generational strongholds by renouncing these things and pleading the blood over yourself and your family. When you've done these things, come to me not in discouragement, but in thanksgiving and praise, rather, and a burden for intercession for those who suffer in this way. My little one has been seeking Father God on behalf of a community octave they're doing to receive graces for a spirit of supplication and prayer to fall upon the community. She had asked me to give visions and dreams as to what was on the Father's heart, and I have. I wanted you, my little one, to really understand and know the feeling of shame and disgust many walk in with themselves when things like that outside of their will happens, or even when they fall into a temptation like that. The shame is so strong it leads to disgust and leads them to complete turning away from me, thinking I feel the same way as the devils pound them and make them feel they have messed up and there's no turning back, so they should continue on giving into these temptations because they're damned anyway, which is all lies. I am a loving spouse and father who's right there to pick up my little ones when they fall, hold them and comfort them in their shame, and tell them how much I love them, that I'm not at all surprised about their weaknesses, nor am I the slightest bit disgusted. Never have I ever been, nor will I ever be with something that came from my heart. Do you understand? You are part of me, just as much as you are incomplete without me. I am incomplete without you. I have made provision for every one of your failures and weaknesses, and grace to overcome them if you just come to me, my dear ones. Persevere through this onslaught of attacks set against you. These tests and temptations won't last for long, but I use everything to strengthen you, equip you, and give you greater compassion for others. I comfort you in your trouble so you can comfort others. You can turn every attack and curse into a blessing by resisting the negative emotions, projections, and images the enemy tries to impart by these attacks and pray. Pray for those who are bound by a spirit of lust and perversion. Pray for those who have been sexually abused and are tormented. Pray for their abusers that they would be delivered and set free. Pray binding the incubus and succubus demons from no longer being able to torment others and send them to the pits of hell to proclaim purity. Pray for all that you felt, sensed, and heard in your dream, knowing that there's a soul actually going through that and is in need of grace and prayer. When you offer crosses like this to me and prayer, it's so powerful. This is a hard sacrifice, backed up with prayer bears copious fruit, and makes the devils angry and depressed because the assignment they had against you of shame and discouragement didn't work. Rather, it caused you to become more fervent in spirit and other souls to be set free. That was the end of Jesus' message. This was such a timely message because that day was Saturday, our community gathering. We had to choose the movie to watch, and the Lord put it on my heart for us to watch The Heart of Man, which I've referenced to you all before. It's a powerful movie about shame, the fall of man from the garden of lust, and how that caused us to seek identity of the things rather than the Father's love. Yet he continues to pursue us until we come to the end of ourselves and embrace his love that was there all along, not as disgust or shame as the devils make us think. I was a little nervous sharing this because it's a deep movie. However, I knew it would bring freedom to many of us. It sure did. As we all begin to open up to be transparent about our past, history, struggles, and pain we went through, some cried and we prayed for each other as I shared this message with them. I had to examine my family's bloodline and break curses because we have a history of incest, homosexuality, witchcraft, and so much more in my family, which the Lord has shown me all through dreams. So I began to pray against that for this next generation. Then I had another dream this following day where I saw two young men fighting as it was being taped. One of the boys beat the other young man up so badly until he killed him. It was so violent and bloody. But I didn't wake up asking why this time. I woke up going to my knees to pray 
for this generation and the youth. Holy Spirit told me we should pray against a spirit of anger, rage, murder, and rebellion that's taken precedence over this generation. So stand with me. Let's pray against these things. God bless you guys. Until the next message. Father, thank you for this word. I thank you your word will go forth and not return void. I thank you for your wisdom and counsel you've given us concerning, Lord, this incubus and succubus demons and just spiritual warfare in dreams. Lord, I pray for those who are being tormented and attacked in this way would be granted a spirit of courage to rise up within them, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, and turn every cross, every attack into a blessing, Lord God, by interceding for those souls, Lord God, who are being attacked in that very way. We pray right now, breaking off every generational curse, Lord God, of, of lust and sexual morality and sexual identity confusion, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You break and bind every spirit of rebellion, anger, rage, and murder against this generation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord. And we pray, Lord God, that you would equip us, Lord God, equip us jesus help us to walk in your purity lord in jesus my name i release and loose the spirit of purity upon this generation in the mighty name of jesus christ and i pray right now lord god um you're covering that you hide many under the shadow of your wings as we're sleeping lord god that no weapon formed against us will prosper lord god and we bind every incubus and succubus demon assigned to your chosen ones lord god assigned to your sons and daughters tormenting them lord god we bind the back of force retaliation these ascend them and cast them abyss in the name of jesus christ and we bind every spirit of condemnation shame and guilt and discouragement depression that's a sign and comes along with these demons in the name of jesus to cause many of your sons and daughters to be bondage and to be bound lord god and not turning to you lord we pray and we lose the spirit of freedom right now in the name of jesus christ lord god and we pray that you begin to put such a heart and a burden for all of us, Lord God, for, for intercession, Lord God, as to what we're seeing, Lord God, in our dreams, and give us wisdom and counsel understanding of why you allow these things, Lord God, and we thank you, Lord God, for this burden, we thank you that this is on the Father's heart, help us stand alongside with Father God to bring these um, attacks, to bring these assignments, Lord God, to, to be null and void, Lord, in the name of Jesus in our generation, and we pray, Father God, for, we pray for sweet, sound sleep, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, over your beloved ones, Lord God. And we pray a spirit of perseverance, Lord God, if you do permit these attacks again, Lord God, that we stand in perseverance, we stand in your courage, we stand upon your word and resolve and not allow the enemy to steal our joy, our peace, Jesus. God, and still our love for you, Lord, in your presence. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you guys. Till next message.